applying to medical school was probably one of the most painful things I had to do. Not because it was like physically painful, but the process just so long and draining. Like I started the application cycle last May, so May of 2022, and right now it's June of 2023, and I'm technically not still done yet because I'm still on wait lists for schools. That's just crazy. People say that this process is more of a marathon than a sprint, but I would say it's more like you're lost at sea, and so you're just swimming. Eventually, you your muscles start, I don't know what I'm saying. And the thing is, I went through this whole process and I'm not even at the starting line yet. Like, I haven't even started medical school. And then there's like residency, and then like fellowship. Huh. I applied to 37 medical schools, which I know sounds crazy, but no, actually, yeah, that's pretty crazy. I, I actually don't know how or like why or what I did during this process, but um, I'm about to tell you right now, because I have notes here. I wrote notes. I'm here to give you a rundown of my application timeline, and hopefully this helps someone out there in the world who is struggling like I was just last year ago. Also, watch till the end to see where I end up committing. Before I read my school list, I want to add a caveat that the only reason why I was able to apply to this many schools was because I applied and qualified for the fee assistance program. Now, this video isn't sponsored by FAP, or for that matter, anyone at all. But I want to quickly plug this because, especially for people who come from low-income backgrounds, this is a lifesaver. Not only do you get 20 schools from your primary application paid for completely, but also schools will often see that you qualified for the fee assistance program and they'll actually waive your secondary costs. So you might not have to even pay for secondaries, which is crazy. Trust me, the costs add up tremendously. And honestly, this whole process is just so need blind for like financials, like yeah, okay, here we go. Um, here are the schools that I ended up applying to in somewhat alphabetical order. Albert Einstein. Huh. Don't, don't do what I did. Don't, don't apply to this many schools. I don't know why I did. 3.85 and 5.16. Moving on. As a pre-med, I was by nature neurotic, which meant that I looked at all the subreddits and all the YouTube videos for my primary application. And after hours of going through subreddits and YouTube videos, I was left with one main message. I forgot the message. Wait, hold on. Submit your applications early. <laughs> Basically, there's a date when AMC releases their first wave of applications to schools, and you want to be in that first wave. Here's the logic. Some medical schools will have rolling admissions, which means that you will have the best chance of getting in if you submit your applications early when there are no spots filled yet. I'm not sure if that reason is necessarily sound, but it's what the subreddit said, not me. You know what I'm saying? Also, an important note, submitting your primary application is not the same as it being processed. Which I know sounds intuitive now. Um, now that I'm saying it, it sounds intuitive. Basically, the AAMC needs a few weeks to look through and verify your information in the primary application and also calculate your science and non-science GPA. And so you want to submit your application as early as possible so that the AAMC can process it and that it can be in time for the first wave. For me, I submitted my primary application on June 2nd at 12.09 a.m. Don't ask me why. And then it was processed June 17th at 1.00. 27 p.m. Submit your applications early. Do it. Now. Because I qualified for the fee assistance program, I actually got all of my secondaries waived off, which I definitely would not have been able to apply to as many schools as I did without this, and so I'm really grateful. Regardless of whether you are applying to 10 or 40 schools, my advice is the same. Pretty right. Most school secondaries can be condensed into a few prompts, and a lot of schools will actually reuse previous prompts. So do your future self a favor and go to Google, look up your school secondary prompts, and get to pre-writing. 
For me, I ended up submitting most of my secondaries end of June to end of July-ish in that month. Also, just to note, um, around this time, you will feel uh, a burning sensation of um, burning out. And my advice for you is don't. I was fortunate enough to get a total of seven interview invites, two in August, two in September, two in October, and then radio silence until one in January. I ended up attending six out of the seven interviews, which were Albert Einstein, Geisel Dartmouth, Hofstra, NYU Long Island, Tufts, and Wild Cornell. I received an invite from UIC, but at that point I had multiple sentences, so I ended up not attending that interview. As for results, I am grateful to announce that I got sentences from Guys of Dartmouth on October 17th, which was the first day that AMC could release decisions, Tufts on October 19th, and Einstein on February 1st. I was also waitlisted from Wild Cornell and Hofstra, and I got my only host interview rejection from NYU Long Island. As you can see, there's a period between October and January where it was just radio silence, and inevitably there will be a time where there is a lull. My advice for you during that time would just be to keep yourself preoccupied and busy with other things so you're not worrying about your application too much. Like for me, I went through a core life crisis. And finally, I'm grateful to announce that I'll be attending Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the Bronx this upcoming August. I'm so excited to start this new chapter of my life, as well as have the opportunity to live in New York. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for your time and for your support, and good luck to your application process. My last piece of advice would be, if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, just cry it out.